Hello, and welcome to the making of video for my current project, the Lord of the Rings Rohan Village. Uh, if you're not familiar with the village, here is a picture of it. It is a Nordic-styled village situated on the along a mountainside, and um, here's my swing at it. The first thing I did for this scene was create the landscape. And I did that by starting with a plane in ZBrush. And um, actually, let me let me take you to my website real quick. I referenced a tutorial by Choco on Polycount, who actually does uh, a really in-depth and amazing series on how to make high-quality landscapes and terrains for games. Uh, it's kind of long, but if you have the time, I highly recommend looking at it because it's an amazing tutorial. There you go. So yeah, he takes you through his whole process, how he makes the terrain in, in Mudbox and World Machine. Uh, so yeah, I uh, I sculpted out a base mesh in ZBrush, just the basic shape that I wanted for the terrain that matched the reference photo that I showed you earlier. And after after I got the general shape that I wanted, I appended in the plane that I started with and took those both into XNormal to render out a height map. And once I had the height map, I open that up in World Machine and put it into this file input node. I threw on a blur and some erosion and coastal overlay nodes to give it a more realistic look like and add more details like how I wanted in the uh, in the reference. The most important ones were the erosion and coastal overlay ones which uh, ended up turning my blobby mesh into something a little more along the lines of what I wanted, which you can see in this little preview window up here, or right here. Uh, it's a little low res right now because this is just a preview. Um, if I wanted to show you the, the full build, I would have to click this compile button and it would render it out for you, but I've already done that in UDK. So this is what the landscape turned out to look like. And I think it, I think it turned out pretty good. So once I had my landscape in here, I created a material for it, um, and the main part of the material is just using terrain layer weights that I could, uh, so I could paint on different materials for different parts of the landscape. I uh, I have a rock material, grass, and snow, along with a big, and uh, I'll explain what the big is right now. So right here on the ground, this is my grass. Up there in the mountaintops is the snow. Right there is a little bit of the rocks. And um, yeah, if, if I pull out uh, quite a distance, you could definitely see the tiling of my grass texture. Uh, the same goes for my rock texture, which is what I was uh, what I was initially using to paint over the mountains. I was just painting on that rock texture. But as you can see down here, uh, from far away, the rock texture on the mountains was clearly tiling. So what I did is I, I took the color map that I was able to export from World Machine, I took it into Photoshop, uh, added in the colors and a few more details that I wanted, and just made that a big single overlay of the entire terrain with no tiling at all. So what I did is I painted the the big texture, the main texture over the whole landscape first and then I painted in the tiling stuff where I knew I was going to be close and not notice the tiling. Like here, you can't notice that the grass or the dirt it is tiling at all. Um, but from out here you can. 
and from out here the big texture looks normal it looks like it should it's not tiling at all it looks it looks good but if you get up close to it you can see that it's incredibly blurry and you can't understand what it is at all so the big texture is good for far away but terrible for up close and my tiling textures are great from up close and terrible from far away so I just made the two work uh, the next thing I made was modular pieces to create the whole village um, I modeled all of these pieces in Blender and then took them into 3D Studio Max to uh, texture them and create the UV layouts because I was more comfortable with unwrapping in uh, in 3D Studio Max than I was in Blender. But I am happy to say now I am very proficient at modeling, texturing, and unwrapping in both Blender and 3D Studio Max, so now I don't need to port my Blender work over to 3D Studio Max. Uh, so. So the first thing I wanted to make sure was that I had my, that I was building everything to scale, so I wouldn't have to scale it up or scale it down in UDK once I put it in there. So I brought in a, uh, a biped that was uh, 108 units high, which is roughly around the size of the UDK bot. So I used this dummy for scale. I also used a box which is supposed to be one third. Well, it is one third the height of the UDK bot, so it's just another measuring tool that I used. Uh, and then this is just a, it's, it's not even a full model of a building, it's just parts of a building and different things put together. Like as you can see, I have uh, multiple, I've got two, two different styles of columns that I use, one's short, one's tall. Um, and I also, for different buildings, I would take away these pieces, take away that piece, or like these pieces also, and just have that, or yeah, just that or something. Uh, just anything to add more variation when I'm making buildings that use the same pieces. I also made uh, two different door meshes, one rectangular, one round, just to add more variation again. And uh, working in, in working with modular pieces is just great because it's a huge time saver and everything looks like it's made from the same materials because it is, so they all kind of belong in the same environment. Uh, so this is what it looks like in UDK. All of these, uh, like this is grouped right now, so I'm able to just move the whole group without having to select different pieces, which also saves a lot of time. So I can move the whole group around, uh, but it is actually made from those individual pieces that I just showed you. So if I right click on it, go into groups, and then say unlock groups, it'll still remain a group, but now I'm able to edit individual pieces. So you can see how my different modular assets were put together to create this one building. So I could just tear this thing apart and show you how it's built. Pretty simple. Uh, all the all the houses are using the same pieces, but uh, as you can see, this one it just has it just has this one little tip and these two tall two tall columns. Whereas uh, another building like this one would have would have the two shorter columns and uh, those support beams and the tip. And here, here I used, um, I used multiple thatched roof 
meshes. So these are actually three meshes to make one roof. And uh, yeah, with, uh, with just a few modular pieces I'm able to create a whole village of pretty similar looking but still unique uh, enough buildings to where you don't think, hey, that's that's the same exact building as that one. No, it all it all kind of ties in pretty well. So that's it. Thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something.